Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Good Owl Games and welcome to September's monthly roundup, the video where I talk to you about the changes to my board game collection. Ready, set, launch! <laughs> So welcome to October. That is another month done and dusted. Um, yeah, we get one step closer to Halloween and one step closer to Christmas. Maybe we should panic ever so slightly. Um, but yeah, I do kind of like Halloween season. There's something cool about a little bit of spook. Um, maybe, you know, I'll try and pull out some kind of spooky games or some spooky movies. I want to know, do you do that at this time of year? Um, well, yeah, what kind of things would you watch and play? I don't think I've got many spooky board games. I don't know, and I'm not really into horror kind of things for Halloween, so I guess I'm just going to watch Hocus Pocus on repeat. Um, but yeah, so less about October and more about games. Uh, so for those of you new to this format, welcome, welcome. It's lovely to have you here. Um, I'll start the video off by talking about the new acquisitions to my collection. Um, then I will talk about some of the games that I've been playing over the past month. And then there's like a personal bit section if you want to hear some backstory about me and possibly the channel and just some random ranting. Um, so I'll put these all like as separate timestamps in the video so you can hop around as you so desire. But of course, I'd love for you to watch the whole thing. Um, right, so I'm going to launch right into the new stuff. Um, so there have been a couple of new things this month, but more importantly, I finally finished my shelf of shame or mostly, mostly, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, so I'll finally be able to give you some feedback on games I got last month or the month before. So I'm like getting the slate clean. Um, but we'll start off with new games. And this first game is Point Salads. Yes, it's a small game, um, which isn't normally like me. Um, I normally don't buy small games. Um, but how this one came about is I managed to go and visit my friend. And when I went to visit, she was showing me some of her board games. And so they'd be the kind of things I wouldn't normally have chosen for myself. So it included me getting to try a game of Roll For It, um, which was better than I'd anticipated. And I got to try Point Salad and I kind of liked it. Um, so, of course, the, the title itself is a great play on words. Um, Stefan Feld would be proud. Um, but the game itself is um, like a set collection game um, in which you are drafting from a little tableau and you're trying to match different fruits or vegetables and group them together to get points. It's pretty simple. Um, I liked it a lot at two, I think, than I did at three players. Um, and the reason being that you can be very strategic with two about what cards people are collecting and maybe, you know, removing some of them or getting them out of the way. Um, it was definitely a little bit more dynamic than I was anticipating and it plays very quickly, which is, you know, always a bonus. And I didn't mind it. Um, now, <laughs> I say this all. So I bought my own copy, obviously. So I played with someone else's and then bought my own copy because I like supporting our local neighborhood game store. Um, and when we got at home, I thought the quality of the cards in mine were super thin compared to my friends. So I was a little disappointed by that, but it is a small game. So, you know, it's not the worst. And it already feels like my husband has broken it, which I'm hoping I won't continue. He had a really exceptional score the last time we played. I'm like, I think we'll have to be meaner um, while playing um, for that. But either way, yeah, it's just nice and fun little palate cleanser thing. It's, you know, you play a couple of games of it back to back. Um, so yeah, so that's point salad. Um, how did it, I suppose, yeah, I, I don't, I don't terribly mind it. I think it's probably what I'm going to call it for now. We'll see, we'll see if it gets better over time. Right. So next on the list is a much bigger game. And I've actually already done an unboxing and introducing for this game because it was just so huge. And I thought it might be fun to share it with you because I just thought it was so entertaining. So this is Blood Bowl. Um, okay, so if you're not into miniatures or Warhammer, you, you know, you've probably not heard of this, um, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. 
Um, so Blood Bowl is a fantasy football game. And by fantasy, they mean there are orcs and elves and things like that who are playing a game of like American football. So you have a number of models. Um, yes, you have to like take out and assemble the models out of the box um, to use on your team. But it's a small amount of models. You only need like 12 or something for a team. And you can play it like you would in a league where you have points. And if you win, you can buy more players and do things like that. Each team has its own kind of special abilities and stuff like that. Um, it comes with a rather hefty rule book on some, uh, these kind of games do but I kind of liked some of the fun and whimsy to it so I've played a number of miniature games but I've never quite gotten around to, to Blood Bowl um, and so in a moment of madness just decided to, to pick it up um, so I've kind of played a tester a couple of turns to so I could see how it works and so basically you have a number of abilities that you're going to use and you have to roll a dice um, to see if you will succeed or not. Um, there's a little bit of strategy to it as well because a lot of it is to do with where you're placing your miniatures. So let's say you can block someone else's or so you could catch a ball or that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, I could find it kind of exciting. Um, the miniatures were hard work to put together. I remember Games Workshop having better miniatures than this, but apparently not. Um, so there's a bit of work in that. And if you're the kind of person who, you know, is into hobby things, if you like assembling things and then painting them, this is a really nice way to do that and play a game at the same time. So I have to have a full game, yes. I know, I know. Um, it's the only game I didn't quite make before getting this um, video recorded. My apologies. Um, so next month, I suppose I'll come back with a better report than this. But so far, like, it just looks kind of fun and entertaining. You know what I mean? It's got a sense of humor. So I quite, I quite like that. Um, let me know if you've played it before and what, who, well, like, which team do you play? Because I've got the two teams that come in the box. So I've got like some humans and some orcs. Um, but there are a whole host of other teams, as you'll probably have seen in my other video. I rated all of the teams based on their name and looks um, in my unboxing video. So I would love for people to have a look at that and then tell me which team you thought looked the best. Um, yeah, so that is Blood Bowl. So the last new games on my list are actually expansions. And I'm wondering was I crazy with these, but I couldn't help myself. So um, as some of you may or may not know, I'm quite a fan of the, the Batman game, the Gotham City Chronicles Batman. Um, so this is the one with the horrendous rule book, um, the game boards that are kind of difficult to navigate. Um, it's got some cool miniatures. It's got, uh, I really like its action point system actually. And how the Batman game kind of works is basically it's a scenario driven thing where, you know, you will have a, a team of heroes who will have to prevent the the bad guys and somebody has to play the bad guys um, from having something occur on the board. They usually have a timer. So for example, you know, I had to go and save the mayor's daughter who was being lowered into a vat of acid stuff like that or I had to defuse bombs before they went off. It's got a very kind of Adam West vibe to me of Batman and I think that's why I enjoy it so much but I really like how the characters work as well. You have a set number of action cubes at the start of the game but you only recover so many per turn so you could spend as many as you like but then you could run empty that kind of thing and you use those to activate your abilities and run around the place. So I've had this for a while and we've played it a number of times and I think must be a good couple of months ago now. There was um, I've been we've been slowly picking up some of the expansions, and they're quite expensive things. Um, and the first one we got um was the one that has the T Rex in it. So I believe this is Wayne Manor. Um, yeah, you know why is there T Rex in Batman? I don't know why either. But he ha uh, but we had a we had a great tale with the T Rex. But it's actually in very few of the scenarios, which was a little disappointing. But as I joked with my husband, well, if we have the T Rex, surely we should have the Batmobile right um so we've eventually gotten the batmobile <laughs> um and it is oh, it's such a waste it's actually only in three scenarios total and it didn't really do what i thought it would it actually just kind of sat like an extra character and it was able to shoot its way through walls so that meant that you could take shortcuts through the holes it had made or maybe if it was lucky it could shoot some of the bad guys I don't know, it just, I was, I was a bit let down. And the most letting down part of it is you get this beautiful Batmobile, it's got little wheels. The wheels don't turn. I was like, what? Uh, Cause you can, ro you can't roll it along the table or anything. Uh, disappointed there. 
Um, but I do like adding more things to the Batman paraphernalia. Um, we also picked up the Versus expansion as well. And what this does is that normally the heroes have like three boards or whatever, one for each character you're playing. And you have your cubes to, you know, say what you've activated during the turn. The enemy, however, has like a river. They have this big board in which there is a line of tokens representing the different types of bad guys. And you can activate the guy at the top of the line for free. And when they're being used, they go to the bottom of the line. And, and so you can see that you're kind of working your way through the, the bad guys. You can see who's coming up next kind of thing. Um, and what the Versus expansion does is give the heroes the same river idea. Um, so you alternate through your characters as well, um, just like the bad guys do. Um, so we haven't had a chance to play that yet. That's next on the agenda. But it does seem to allow for like mixing of teams. Better you could play with more hero characters and stuff than, than that. Um, so it's got potential there. Um, and at least it can be used with a bunch of scenarios. But <laughs> so I remain fond of the Batman game, despite it being kind of expensive and a little bit, I don't know, not easy to get into, I think is the best word. Um, but I, yeah, but I, re I remain a fan of it, but I couldn't really, I couldn't overly recommend it. But may you know what, maybe if you're just willing to play a little loose and easy with the rules, you'd, you'd be fine. <laughs> but I do have this, this horrible obsession now with wanting to complete it. Because I'm like, if you're going to own the Batman game, you may as well have all the pieces. Does anyone else ever feel like that about a game? Is there any other game you really wanted to like finish in invert finish? Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I get that sometimes for sure. All right, so that is all of the new games this month. Just checking back through my me my mental my mental file there. I think so. Anyway, I looked it up to check. Um, so yeah, so that was everything new. Right. So I want to hear about what new games you've picked up. Um, at the moment. Seems to be slim pickings. I said this last month too. I still feel the same way. Although there has been a number of big things kind of come to Kickstarter and stuff like that to kind of tempt you in, right? Um, but we'll go on to the games I have been playing so I can finally fill you in on some of those new games from the previous month. All right then. So it feels like this month I've been playing more games than usual, or at least, actually, let, let me rephrase that. I've been playing kind of bigger games than I normally would have chosen. So there's a number of the bigger games here that got multiple plays that I wouldn't normally have done so. So that's been nice. Um, but the first game I want to talk to you about is one that came in last month and we're sticking with the Warhammer Games Workshop theme, unfortunately. Um, and this is Warhammer Quest, the Silver Tower. Um, so I finally got to play this, um, which, <laughs> which is great. So I finally played something with Warhammer Quest in the title. And I did play this with three players instead of two. Um, I have a friend of ours who I thought would play it. So we were getting ready to, to, to set it up. And I was like, we, we should probably invite them around. Um, so that is, that, so we got to have three people, which was kind of nice. Um, so Warhammer Quest, so the quest for the Silver Tower. The Silver Tower is just this thing. Like, I don't, I don't fully understand what it is. It's just... Okay, so this is technically a dungeon crawler of sorts, right? Where you're moving from tile to tile, you're defeating monsters, you're trying to get experience and you're unfolding your way to some sort of boss, right? But a silver tower seems to be some sort of magical place, which means that once people leave a room, the room behind you disappears. And I understand why this is there, um, you know, for the sake of game, the game itself means it needs less tiles to keep left out on the table. Um, but it was supposed to fit into this narrative of the magical silver tower. Um, now this is a campaign game, I think, like there's a, there's a set number of adventures and that's kind of it. And there was a good selection of characters to choose from. Um, including one that has a pet griffin who could just go and do cool things, which is pretty nice. Um, and how the mechanics worked was much better than I had given them credit for. I had assumed we were just going to roll and move and maybe roll some dice to hit things, but it was a bit better than that, thank goodness. It was kind of more like dice manipulation. So you would roll your dice at the start of the round and place the, you'd have the numbers then, and you would be able to activate different abilities based on what numbers you had rolled. And there was ways to get extra dice and things like that that was kind of a group pool for extra dice um, and then you chose kind of which abilities you were going to do with that 
I actually, <laughs> I actually had a lot more fun with it than I was anticipating. It's possible I went in with very low expectations, which wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, but there was quite the bits of story to read as you go into the new rooms and things like that. And we had a friend read it in a dramatic voice. Um, and so it was just seemed like, it just seemed fun, uh, the three of us trying to take stuff down together. Um, now to be fair, we found it kind of easy. And some characters found it easier to level up than others. My character in particular, had a really hard time getting experience because it depends each character has their own way of doing it and it's usually like when you do your special ability you'll get you know one point towards you know leveling up there's a little kind of wheel dial for it um and both the other players managed it quite easily but i did not um but we still i think had a good time um like is it as slick as gloomhaven gosh no um but it does have a ton of very lovely miniatures it had a, a nice board and stuff like that and I think like we enjoyed it like I wonder will we play it again however um not entirely certain about that but yeah I think it surprised me a little bit um in in, in you know how playable it was and actually how good the mechanics were um I do love that there was like a little quest that came along where you had to stack dice as part of it and I just found that so funny I was like oh gosh that was great that was just funny in the middle of it all so yeah I like you know what I mean I absolutely don't hate it I'd probably play it again I have to see if I can convince other people to play it again however but that's Warhammer Quest the Silver Tower right okay so next on the agenda is something I finally got around to playing as well and this is Praga Kaput Regni I'm pretty sure um, I'm butchering that, but we, we've made an effort and I haven't had a chance to come and tell you about this yet. Um, and the good news is I now have played it twice. So if you remember from the video um, where I was explaining why I had got this game, you'll re recognize that very few Vladimir Suchi games have survived the first play in my house. Um, the only one to have survived the first play, I think, is Pulsar. 2849 um but yeah this is looking like a solid keeper which is really good news so what the game is about is that you're kind of helping build a town uh, to, to me it's kind of abstract right because I, I, I know there's an actual story there but to me this is about you know moving your cubes around the place to buy stuff, to place stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it's supposed to be about your investing in a town. Um, and so you are able to do all sorts of things that interact with the board, like you can put out buildings, um, you can, <laughs> like what else do you do? You can go along a road um, and um, you, yeah, you can basically, Right, let, let's go with this. So yeah, you, you're building stuff to get victory points. Let's stick with that. Um, you have your own little action board, right? And you're able to upgrade it by placing tiles and things over it to improve it. And you're able to fortify it as well um, by putting walls around it um, and all these kind of things for victory points. The main thing about this game is that there is a wheel and you choose your action from the wheel and there'll be a bonus to go with your action depending on which one you choose and then the wheel will turn after you know that happens and so that's kind of the indicator of how long the game will run for but also um, allowing different actions to be available at different times based on what the players have chosen. Um, so that's like, that's the really interesting part. Um, I do love your private boards very much. So um, these are where you kind of earn money and stone and you're going to need stone for building things and, and money for buying things, you know, surprise, surprise. But you can also get knowledge and technology and things like that. They're little tracks that you, you go up and along. Um, and then of course there's your private kind of board with your actions that you can upgrade and such. So there's a lot going on here. I know the first time we played it, I was like, oh my God, where, where do we even begin? But once you get into it, it's really not that bad. Um, and I like it a lot. It's, it's really satisfying to play. And I think that's because you can visually see everything improving as you do it. So, you know, I've increased my stone production by this much. I can, I can, I can see it happen. Um, or I've placed out these walls. I can see that happen. There's also like a 3D castle portion where you can go through the different levels and ranks and get bonuses based on how far you get. I still don't fully understand how that works. I played it twice and I'm less like, I can't, I can't be handling that stuff. I'm just gonna do something else. <laughs> so there's still a lot here to be explored, but um, I'm very impressed. Um, despite all the stuff in it, 
none of it feels entirely excessive either. Um, it's just, it feels like it's nice to have options. Um, so overall, yeah, I really like Ra pra Praga Kaput Regni. Um, what a cool title. And hopefully it will stay in the collection. Yeah, I, I would play that again right now, actually. Yeah, so I think that I think that's good. Well done. <laughs> well done. We're finally keeping a Suchi game. Way. And the final thing on the list of games we've been playing um, is one that was the most surprising. And this is Raiders of the North Sea. So I've had this for like a month or two. It took me a very long time to get to it. Um, and I think this is because we've really enjoyed other games from Garpel Games, but it does feel like um, there was a set way to, to win. Like my, my husband kind of broke the games a bit in the sense that he would just get maximum kind of points every time. Like he just solves them, if that makes sense. And I think there are certain games that lend themselves well to that. And I was worried um, that Raiders of the North Sea would be a similar situation where they're very good games and I really enjoy playing them. But there is zero fun in playing with somebody who maximizes kind of the score every time. And once he was able to do it once, you know, you can't not do it again after that. Um, so yeah, this, this one was questionable for us. That's why I think it took me so long to get to this. But wow, is this game special. I, um, I was so impressed. Um, so Raiders of the, the North Sea is a game about Vikings. You have a Viking town, you're gathering people into your boat so you can go raiding across the water. Um, this is all done via um, um, <laughs> meeples, well, a single meeple really. And this is where it gets really smart. Um, so there are action points on the board. It's a worker placement game. And so when you place a worker down, you take up a different worker. Um, this, this is incredibly smart. Um, and there's something very clever here, especially at two players, we found about blocking off spots for other players. Now, normally we wouldn't play like that. Um, but the way it works is if, so if you want access to a particular zone, you want to get money or whatever it is, um, it has to be empty, right? So if you take up someone's meeple from there to leave it empty for your turn, your opponent gets a turn first and they can just go and use it before you can even get there. So it was this kind of very subtle and only slightly annoying back and forth between us. But it gets better, right? Because the game starts, all of your Viking meeples are black and you get cards to put in your boat that are your Vikings and they head off to across the sea to go and raid somewhere. But when you raid somewhere, your meeple stays out there and you take back a slightly different color meeple instead. Um, and they can do better things. It's like, you know, you upgrade your meeples the more raiding they do. But because you put down a meeple and take it back up, you can take somebody else's meeple, better meeple, let's say. Um, and that can help you going further raiding. And I just think it's so damn sharp. Um, I think the way this game fits together is absolutely beautiful. I kept finding more things where you could see it all knitting together um, as you played out. Um, it's very, very impressive, I have to say. It's really good. I think the only thing that lets it down a little bit is that deck of cards that you're you're drawing your heroes from that go in your boat. Um, gets a little um, samey after a while. I kept finding myself with multiples of the same, you know, warrior or whatever, things like that, where I would have liked to have seen somebody different. Um, and so when you play the game again, you know, the, it's the same kind of people coming back. Um, so yeah, that's the only place where I would love some variety, but I think this is a very impressive game. I was super, super impressed with it. Um, and now the question of whether we keep it or not is still to be seen. We've played it twice. Um, and second time, I suppose we're kind of honing in your skills a little bit now that you know what you're doing. So we'll see if it is as manipul manipulatable um, as some of the other Garpool game titles, but we'll have to see. But either way, this is a very impressive game. Um, I know some people have been telling me about the expansions and I have an idea about those. Um, for those of you who have played it with expansions, tell me which is your favorite and which is worth doing. Because I am totally scared of bloat. I, I think this design is so perfect. I don't want to add anything to it. I'm very reluctant to think about to do that because I think it would take away just from how tight it is. It just fits together so well. Um, so yeah, so it has been a good month of games, actually, I would say. Hopefully we're going to get more in now that the darkness is coming. Um, yeah, it's the time of year for games, isn't it? And cups of tea. 
So tell me what it is you've been playing this month. What has been your favorite? Or actually what's got to the table most? I think that's always a good sign of what your favorite is, right? What you've been playing the most of. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing all about that um, in the comments below, hopefully. And okay, so we're gonna move on to the last portion, which is the personal bit. So if you don't wanna hear me ramble on about my life, my thoughts, the universe and anything, um, you can switch off now. And if not, just follow me on over. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. You've made it to the end of the video. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do actually is plug the Tabletop Inquisition podcast. We put on our latest episode on Monday and this is, episode is to do with which game surprised us most in good ways or bad ways. And I think it's a really, really, really good episode. Um, so it's well worth listening to. If you wanna go check it out, there's tabletopinquisition.com or there's some links to it on, I suppose, my Twitter, which my Twitter or my Facebook, actually any of those places. And if for some reason you'd like to see it, us uh, recording it, we recorded us recording it live if you want to watch the video version that's available to my patrons if you wanted to check that out um so yeah I had to plug that because it's such a fun episode um I go on a bit of a rant um but I, I just I really really enjoyed it um so otherwise yeah it's, it's been a busy month here um lots of videos have been going out um so I only have a couple left and hopefully I will take a bit of a break then maybe before Christmas um you know you can only be so into something for so long without needing a bit of a break right um but it's hard like I've been doing a lot of thinking the past week or two because I don't know I do a lot of thinking I guess that's just who I who I am as a person yeah I suppose you can tell I trained as a philosopher right um so I've just been wondering about the connection between being able to promote yourself and actually making stuff for online. Um, especially, I get I get really exhausted um, with having to try and sell yourself, I suppose. Um, and the problem with that is like, how are you supposed to have, people can't know what you're making if you can't tell them, right? So no one's gonna find your stuff if you don't do it. But I'm just, I'm not really good at putting myself out there. Um, and I find it like a, a hard uh, a hard thing to do and hard work. Um, and so I wish I could somehow just, you know, make videos at random and just put them out there. But then of course no one would ever find them. So this is probably just tired me talking, to be honest. Um, I'm hoping that if I can take a little bit of a break, I can come back a bit rejuvenated. But it doesn't help that kind of the board game world seems to be kind of quiet at the moment and that shipping and things like that are causing issues not just for getting games to people but also for reviewers as well i had a number of games lined up to review that aren't able to ship here at the moment just because it's, it's so expensive um and that's a little sad too um that you know if i live somewhere slightly different this would be easier um yeah i i, I don't know i assume you guys are seeing things like this um out in the world with buying board games and stuff like that things there is a change a coming apparently um and we'll have to see what that brings for everybody but it does mean a little bit of a quiet time hopefully a little bit I'm, I'm almost at the end now of my review copies which means i can have a little break and then maybe you know make some stuff um based on my own games which would be cool i always assumed i would do more of that but um just the way things have been rolling i suppose um in other news yes i'm still going for walks i'm still here <laughs> If you want to see photos of, um, you know, my outdoor adventures, I recommend you follow me on Twitter. I'm at Good Owl Games. If you use that kind of thing, um, that seems to be where I put the pictures. Um, but <laughs> I was like, could I just put them on Facebook as well? I probably could. Let me know if you follow me on other platforms, and I'll if there's enough people, I can I can multi post things, um, wherever it is convenient. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, it's been nice getting outside. Um, for sure, the weather is definitely turning here, so we're getting ready for that. Um, I bought a pair of hiking boots. I'm an official grown up now. Um, getting getting ready for winter. Yeah, and otherwise, I suppose, you know what, the, I must get your opinion actually on the, the Blood Bowl video I made because I, I just made that sitting at my desk kind of on a whim and I'm not sure how I feel about how it turned out or not. I just, I, you know, I kind of made it for fun, but I don't know if that kind of format is entertaining for people. So yeah, if you enjoyed it or if you, you didn't, please be kind. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but you can you can let, let me know too um if this more formal setting i guess works um but yeah so yeah that, that that's kind of been the month short and sweet yeah i don't know where it went either definitely not so i won't waste the rest of your time i'll wait till i have some more news maybe next month but um hopefully you're playing games and taking care of yourselves and i'm looking forward to hearing what games you've been playing um all right so we'll tune in again next month for more yeah more this <laughs> whatever this is all right take care everybody Bye bye bye